Something that raised a lot of eyebrows before Fallout 76 came out was when Bethesda announced how character progression would work in the game. Whereas Bethesda games traditionally allowed players to select desired perks as they leveled up, Fallout 76 differed in that perks took the form of perk cards that players could swap in and out within the confines of the number of points distributed to your character's attributes. And then, every couple of levels, players will earn card packs that yield a random selection of perk cards to bolster their collection further. Now, when people first saw this, their immediate assumption was that this would all somehow be tied to an egregious monetization system. After all, the way perk card packs look and function is very reminiscent of paid loot boxes as seen in other games. However, Bethesda quickly made it clear that these card packs can only be earned through gameplay by leveling up, confirming once and for all that there are no options for players to pay for the random chance of obtaining these pivotal character upgrades. Furthermore, Pete Hines assured that microtransactions in this game would be solely confined to upfront cosmetic items, having stated the following, If you don't want to spend money in the Atomic Shop for cosmetic stuff, you don't have to. We give you a shitload of atoms just for playing the game. Folks that want to spend money on whatever the hell it is because they don't have enough atoms, they can, but it's not, I'm now better playing against other players because I spent money. It's not pay to win and it's not loot crates. When the game finally launched, it was indeed as Bethesda said. While Fallout 76 has all kinds of unacceptable flaws, pay to win or pay to accelerate loot boxes wasn't one of them. In its current state, the game does feature microtransactions, but they are all relegated to cosmetic items that can be bought upfront in the Atomic Shop, albeit at ludicrous prices. The fact that atoms can be earned through gameplay does somewhat mitigate this, but there's still something distasteful about Bethesda encouraging players to pay. $18 worth of microtransactions just to paint your power armor blue. But at the very least, what little remains of the player base could feel safe knowing that glorified gambling would not further tarnish what's already a very compromised product. However, recent discoveries have cast some doubt around Bethesda's promise that microtransactions would solely be upfront cosmetics. The discoveries I'm referring to were conveyed in this Reddit post by user Despotak, who data mined changes and additions to Fallout 76 after the launch of its most recent updates. Among the things that were highlighted were changes made to in-game files associated with something called lunchboxes. Now, if lunchboxes sound familiar to you, that's probably because you've played or looked into Fallout Shelter, the Fallout game that was primarily designed for mobile devices. In that game, lunchboxes are another name for Fallout Shelter's loot boxes, which when opened, grant players five cards that contain random items that range from weapons, outfits, resources, caps, junk items, Nuka-Cola Quantum, pets, to Mr. Handies. These lunchboxes can be earned in-game at a much slower pace, or players can choose to spend real money to buy them in bulk, with prices ranging from $1 for a single lunchbox to $20 for 40 lunchboxes. By paying for lunchboxes and engaging in the game's glorified gambling, players are able to drastically accelerate their progression. It isn't pay to win per se, given that there aren't really any competitive elements, but there's definitely incentive to gamble and obtain lucrative in-game items faster at random, so these lunchboxes can hardly be classified as innocent. Judging by this previous implementation, we know for a fact that lunchboxes entail some kind of randomized loot mechanic, and it would seem as though some incarnation of them will be making its way to Fallout 76. Another Reddit user going by the name Jazz Main broke down some of the important and disconcerting changes or additions that are being made to Fallout 76 lunchboxes based on the recently data mined information. And the first discovery was that a certain tag has been added indicating lunchboxes may soon become a part of the game's Atomic Shop marketplace. While references to lunchboxes have been in Fallout 76 for a while, what's different now is that the tag ATX has been attached. And according to the post, ATX indicates Bethesda Atom Shop profile, meaning that lunchboxes are highly likely being prepped to be sold for atoms in the not so distant future. Future. Moving on, the post proceeded by detailing what lunchboxes might do, and while much of its functionality and how it's intended to be implemented in Fallout 76 remains a mystery, a couple things can be gleaned at. For example, according to this line in the ESM file, it's possible to see that the opening of lunchboxes will be visible 
available for all players to see, meaning everyone in a given server will know you're opening one. The user aptly pointed out that this is reminiscent of Call of Duty World War II, which featured a social hub where people could open loot boxes in front of others as a means for Activision to glorify these loot boxes and lure onlookers into loot box purchases. Or as this post put it, which is hitting my Call of Duty PTSD where loot boxes were visible to everyone on the server in an attempt to show off all the good shit people were getting to try and persuade spectators to buy loot boxes. Are we taking pages out of Activision's book, Bethesda? As for what kinds of rewards these lunch boxes might offer, well, these lines in the ESM file suggest that they might grant you gameplay bonuses, such as XP boosts, carry capacity boosts, damage bonus, and radiation resistance bonus. It should be noted that recent Fallout 76 updates nerfed the rate at which players earn experience points, which sure seems like perfect timing, and carrying capacity has always been a crippling factor with Fallout 76, as it is way too easy for players to be over-encumbered in this game. So, what better way for Bethesda as that to profit from all this than by selling lunchboxes that may help mitigate some of these artificially caused issues. This is how many other recurrently monetizable games are intentionally designed. They knowingly cause a problem so that players will have to pay for the solution. And the fear right now is that Bethesda might be thinking about borrowing ideas from that abhorred playbook. Now, here's something interesting. Another line of code that was highlighted is this one right here, which removes the category of perk card packs from the Atomic Store. The fact that this line even exists raises the question of whether perk card packs were originally supposed to be sold in the marketplace for real money before the idea was pulled last minute and Bethesda's trying to hide that fact, or whether this could signify that perk card packs will eventually be added into the Atomic Store. While the latter assumption is purely conjecture, the fact that a line of code linking perk card packs and the Atomic Store even exists seems to at least suggest that Bethesda did at one point contemplate making perk perk card packs purchasable with real money. That honestly shouldn't come as a big surprise, given how much the card packs resemble traditional loot boxes and how they look, feel, and function. But at the same time, given how badly Bethesda messed up with the launch of Fallout 76, further scrutiny of their questionable behind-the-scenes planning and decisions is the last thing the company needs right now. I would hope that Bethesda isn't dumb enough to even contemplate making card packs purchasable, especially now as players and spectators of this train wreck are keeping Bethesda under a microscope awaiting their next screw-up. Then again, given the string of baffling and nonsensical blunders surrounding Fallout 76, I wouldn't put it past Bethesda to make dumb decisions that defy all common sense. While some may point to Pete Hines stating early on that the Atomic Shop would be cosmetics only, that players won't be able to pay to gain gameplay advantages, and that there will be no loot crates for assurance, game companies have a history of lying about their monetization plans or keeping mum about them before underhandedly updating monetization to be more aggressive weeks or months after a game's launch, so I wouldn't simply take Pete Hines' word for it. This finally brings us to the last point that this user highlighted, which is that there is now a lot of lines of code detailing visual and auditory effects that were added for the opening of lunchboxes, such as balloons, confetti, and whatnot. If you've been following news surrounding loot boxes, then you will know that part of what makes them so addictive are the flashy visual and auditory elements that are specifically designed to trigger psychological impulses within your brain that make it perceive the act of opening loot boxes and the rewards they may yield as immensely satisfying. These are techniques that are employed by real-life gambling contraptions like slot machines, which in themselves feature all kinds of flashy visual and sound effects to keep your brain hooked to the activity. From the looks of it, with lunch boxes, Bethesda may not intend to shy away from these manipulative psychological tics if recent additions are anything to go by. One last thing I'd like to highlight is this screen grab that one of the Reddit comments linked to, showing very clearly thumbnail images of lunchboxes discovered within Fallout 76 files. Notice how similar these look to the thumbnails used to sell lunchboxes in Fallout Shelter, with different images showing different quantities of lunchboxes that come with certain purchases. In the case of Fallout 76, it would seem as though players will be able to purchase lunch boxes one, three, or five at a time that we know of. This right here may be the most damning piece of evidence that lunchboxes in Fallout 76 
are likely to be sold for real money, as otherwise such thumbnails would not exist. So yeah, for now this is the basic rundown of everything we know about Fallout 76's impending implementation of loot boxes. It's important to keep in mind that we should reserve final judgment until we actually see these newly added lines in the ESM come to fruition and in action, but at the same time, you should be vigilant about the suspicious preparations that Bethesda seems to be making for Fallout 76. Now, I should point out that some people are speculating that lunchboxes may be specifically tied to upcoming in-game events, with one Reddit user having stated the following. I hate to be the herald of controversial news, but there is a lot of work done on items that are collectively called lunchboxes. They are consumables that offer effects similar to serums, but with duration. For now, they look like part of the holidays events Bethesda is planning. They are not part of the Atom Shop yet, but they're there are some edits that strongly suggest they may be coming. Take all this with a pinch of salt and investigate further. So the reason some people suspect that this is tied to events is because Bethesda has been hinting via blog posts that they are making preparations for upcoming events that will add certain twists to gameplay. For example, here is a quote from their December 4th update, which reads as follows. We are excited to announce that starting in early 2019, we plan to release a variety of in-game events that will take place over the course of a week. These events will be different every time, and will often provide a small buff or create an interesting twist on normal gameplay. The small buffs may very well be referring to lunchboxes that, as indicated by updated files within Fallout 76, may grant players random XP boosts, carry capacity increases, damage buffs, and radiation resistance, among other things. Assuming that there is indeed a connection between these events and the lunchboxes, then one could surmise that the lunchboxes might only be available temporarily throughout the course of an event, which are apparently meant to last a week, according to Bethesda. Regardless, the main point of contention remains that there are strong hints suggesting lunchboxes won't just be rewards players will earn via gameplay, but also ones that will be added to the Atomic Store for purchase, meaning that paying players may be able to gamble for tangible gameplay buffs to accelerate their progression. I wouldn't go as far as labeling this pay to win, not yet at least, but it's still a glorified gambling system that may give paying players certain advantages over those who don't pay. And that goes contrary to what Pete Hines said before Fallout 76's launch, that microtransactions would not affect gameplay and that there wouldn't be any loot crates. This would be especially egregious if it turned out that Bethesda has plans to allow players to purchase perk card packs though this prospect is far from certain, and hopefully unlikely. It is no secret that Fallout 76 is 2018's laughing stock, and Bethesda's reputation has plummeted meteorically after they flushed all the goodwill they had built up over the years down the toilet with how dispassionate, deceitful, and apathetic they've been lately. After their string of blunders, the once beloved company is hanging by a thread when it comes to consumer trust, and adding any form of paid loot boxes in this landscape, regardless of whether they're temporarily tied to events or permanently tied to the game, would prove fatal for what are already abysmal optics. So I would hope that if they do end up implementing these lunch boxes, they only keep them confined to gameplay rewards with no way to pay for them, and I would especially hope that they don't contemplate adding perk card packs as a purchasable item in the Atomic Shop. What Fallout 76 needs right now are major updates and fixes or a miraculous overhaul, not additional forms of monetization. Bethesda needs to prioritize on what's really important right now. I'll say again that it's too early to claim anything definitively right now, but recent additions within Fallout 76's core files certainly do not paint an optimistic picture, and given Bethesda's recent track record, I would be hard-pressed to give the company the benefit of the doubt as far as their intentions with lunchboxes and monetization are concerned. Now, if this is all a misunderstanding, all Bethesda has to do is address the community directly with a statement, be straight with us, and clear the air. But as far as I know, Bethesda has yet to comment on these latest concerns, and the perception this gives off is that they either cannot be bothered to be transparent despite their promise to communicate better moving forward, 
or that they have something egregious to hide. These are one man's perspective anyway. I'd love to hear what your theories are on what recently data mined files could indicate about impending lunchboxes in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, Stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.